and once in a while they are outright life-altering. November 18, 2011 was one such day. It is one thing to have heard about students being pepper sprayed. It was another to sit and watch the video. I was horrified. Moreover, I was outraged. Seated protesters slowly and methodically bathed in pepper spray by Lieutenant John Pike. A few days later, they shared their story in front of a huge audience that was officially estimated at 5,000, but I believe was a good deal larger. I will never forget the clear and articulate accounts of the students expressing the shock and the pain and the agony of being pepper sprayed. Some people have questioned, why honor people for being pepper sprayed? For me, it was a simple decision. The actions of the student on that day in the quad exposed years of police abuse, incompetence, and inadequate and dangerous handling of student protests. From the illegal arrest at Merak for student service workers in 2007, to the freeway tasering, to the attack and trumped up charges on Brianna Holmes, the university police failed again and again and put innocent people and students at risk. The problem in the aftermath was finding out the truth and holding those responsible accountable. Simply put, who was going to trust the university to do an honest investigation? For me, those doubts disappeared when I heard that Cruz Reynoso, the former Supreme Court Justice, was appointed to head up the task force. Those of us who have known Cruz Reynoso for years knew that he would not be a part of any cover-up. And when his task force came out with its report, it was devastating. The truth had come out, and the action of the police and the administration lay bare for all to see. Last year, in November, we honored the lifetime achievement of Cruz Reynoso with a Vanguard Award. This year, it is perhaps an even bigger honor that he will be presenting those students who were pepper sprayed and arrested on November the 18th, 2011 on the UC Davis Quad with an award themselves. Ladies and gentlemen, Justice Cruz Reynoso. Thank you very much. When I got a call asking whether, uh, at telling me that the president wanted to appoint me uh, as the chair of the task force, I asked if he was sure he wanted to appoint me, because I had a reputation for speaking my mind. I got a call back saying that the, that the president, in fact, had confidence in me, and he did want, me, want to have me be the chair, so, uh, so I accepted it. Uh, and fortunately, though we have a quite diverse uh, task force, they were all of like mind. They wanted to call things as they were. So we did. And sad to say, we found fault with everybody, from the <laughs> chancellor down to the, poli to, to the police. <laughs> During that time, uh, I did a lot of uh, thinking and hearing. Uh, and a friend of mine put me together with a gentleman who uh, is an expert on police practices. And he told me that he had done studies on 31 police uh, units, p police forces in cities and counties. In those 31, he had only found one that had what he thought was an essential part of a good police department. And that essential part was that there would be an understanding that if anybody in that police force violated the law or ethics, etc., that person could be confident that somebody else would bring that to the attention of the authorities. He said only one of those 33 
uh, met, met that, that standard. Sad to say, I've had contact in Yolo County with several police departments, the UC Davis Police Department, the Davis Police Department, the, Davis, uh, the Yolo County Sheriff's the Office, the District Attorney's Office. None of them, sad to say, in my view, meet that qualification. I'm very sorry to say. I, 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 trust that, I trust that those that I haven't had contact with do meet that qualification. I, 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 don't, I don't know. Uh, so it seems to me that, uh, that we have a lot, a lot of work to do. Uh, all too often we believe the first statement that comes after an incident uh, like the pepper spray. And the first statement was from the police chief at, at, the, at the university who said they sprayed the students because they were afraid for their lives. They were surrounded. Later, of course, we could tell that it simply was not true. It was not true because of, the, because of the videos that many students had taken, incidentally, something like 60 videos. So, so the, uh, the Crow people who were doing the investigation for us put together a, 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 those videos in such a way that we could tell minute by minute what was happening. They were never surrounded. If they were afraid, as some of them said they were afraid, they were afraid because of a lack of training, lack of experience, or they didn't know what was going on. Our report began with the first sentence that said, the pepper spray should never have taken place. Uh, and, and, I, and that was the, the, the uniform and unanimous uh, conclusion of, of everybody in, uh, in, in our task force. Fortunately, the task force is not one, the task force report apparently it's not one that will simply gain dust on the shelf. And indeed, uh, it was sufficiently stark uh, that the chancellor and others are beginning to implement many, many of our recommendations with the hope that the UC Police Department will in fact be like that one police department that expert found, where everybody there being public citizens will understand that, that when another public citizen does not live up to the ideals of that department, that, that person will be reported. Only then can we have full confidence in the public service, service that we have in terms, of police in terms of our police. I happen to support the police. I was, I was, telling, I was told one time when I was in Virginia, uh, my wife and I were in a terrible accident, and, and several people said, don't go, don't, at night, don't go by this street. There's, there's a public park there, and it's dangerous. Uh, you know, I, I confess I didn't pay attention to that. I walked by, the, by, by that uh, park. But whenever I would see a police officer there, I really had a sense of protection. Uh, so so that, that's the sort of sense that we want whenever we see a, 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 a police officer, it, it seems to me. Uh, so, so to me, it, it, it is indeed uh, an, an honor to present this award to, to the students who, who provided the opportunity for a true analysis of how the police force at UC Davis was operating, uh, how it operated, how it violated the law, how it did not follow its, its, own, its own procedures, the lack, of, uh, the lack of, of proper relationship between the top officials, including the chancellor uh, of the university, uh, uh, with the police department, uh, di did not properly operate well. And all of those things need to change and apparently are, in, are on the basis of, of, of changing. And the credit for that comes not to us, but for the students who suffered and brought, that, the, uh, and brought forth an order from, from the president of the university to in, indeed establish a task force that gave us the opportunity to look at reality and not the myths. And, and I present to you those who brought, those who, a couple of those who brought that reality uh, to the attention of the entire world. Showing up with, 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 with a little, little phone that, that can take videos. <laughs> so thank you so much. Yeah. Me and my friend are going to say something briefly. We'll put this down. We want to thank you all for this award. Um, there were a lot of amazing and brave students there on the quad on November 18th. And we are honored to represent them in accepting this award. 
David has committed to remaining active in exposing political repression, not only with the sensational pepper spraying, but also with the less spectacular but still critical Davis Dozen criminal case, of which Deanna and I are a part. Continuing to bring attention to these cases, even when they are less spectacular, is what sets the Davis Vanguard apart. November 18th last year was but one well-recognized event in a long, continuous pattern of police abuses enforcing unjust monetary policies. And this pattern continues right now, just down the coast in Anaheim, and Canada and Syria and Cairo all connected. Davis is but one face of this shared struggle. It goes on every day. And we need to be brave and stand up, really stand up with each other against repression and systematic abuses. There are protests this weekend in San Francisco and Oakland, and there will continue to be protests. We hope you're awarding us this award will be a first step in continued support of political dissent. Thank you, and have a wonderful night. One of our main reasons for being on the quad on November 18th was to protest the ongoing fee hikes within the UC system. But a much stronger driving force and the reason we were there so passionately was to protest the police brutality against students and faculty at UC Berkeley that had been seen a few days before. Um, <clears throat> in this way, I believe our struggle transcends the university and connects very closely to the issues being discussed here today. That day on the quad, we stood in solidarity not with just our fellow protesters, but with all victims of police brutality. This year alone, there have been hundreds of extrajudicial murders by police and untold police beatings, mostly of people of color. Just this week, there were two murders in Anaheim, um, Manuel Diaz and Joel Acevedo. And uh, when the community there set out to protest these killings, uh, they, a crowd of largely of families, women and children, were attacked by police with their less than lethal weapons and attack dogs. Uh, the last three nights, these protests have continued in Anaheim, and I think it's imperative that everyone here realize that their struggle is our struggle. Um, those protesting the murders of Kenneth Harding and Alan Bluford, uh, those protesting the unjust imprisonment of Cece McDonald, a transgender woman of color, those pro t protesting the prosecution of the Santa Cruz 11, those protesting in Quebec, in Egypt, in Spain, and in Oakland, all are fighting the same fight we are. The fight to end the death penalty, <coughs> and the fight to end unjust prosecutions and the struggle against police and institutionalized state violence are all one and the same. We will continue in our struggle and continue to stand in solidarity with the, those engaged in struggle the world over, and we hope that you will do the same. Thank you.